In today's video, we're going to be having a look at how to set up Home Assistant on the NS Panel Pro for a full and local Home Assistant experience. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. First things first, I want to just clear up a couple of things. The method that we're going to be using for putting Home Assistant onto the NS Panel Pro today is the method that's been provided by the legend that is Blackadder. If videos really aren't your thing, then you can find an excellent written guide over at Blackadder's blog, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Next, and again just to kind of clear this one up, we're not actually installing Home Assistant physically on the NS Panel Pro. What we're actually doing is just sideloading the Android companion app onto it, and this allows us to connect to our existing Home Assistant and control our dashboards and view all of our other bits. So Home Assistant doesn't actually install on it, it's just the companion app. The final thing to point out here is you need to have your NS Panel Pro plugged in throughout the process of this install and you need to have run through the Sonoff setup in order to actually get the device connected to your Wi-Fi. With the installation that we're doing today it's going to be fully wireless and there's going to be no device disassembly or any kind of soldering required. So with that said, let's get straight into it. The first thing we're going to need to do is to download the Android Debug Bridge and this is actually included as part of the Android platform tools so we can just download that in order to access it. All of the downloads for everything you're going to need today are going to all be listed in the description below. They're also all going to be handily in order. So if you want to thank me, just uh, drop me a like. So let's grab the ADB tools. In my case here, I'm just saving it straight to the desktop in a folder called NS Panel Pro HA. And this is just where I'm going to store all the bits that we're going to be downloading today. With the platform tools now downloaded, we just need to extract its contents. So navigate to where you've saved it, and then we're going to select it and right click and choose Extract All. You can then just click extract and it will extract all of the file's contents. You should now have the extracted version of the platform tools and if you navigate inside of that you'll be able to see all of the different executables and DLL files for the Android debug tools. By default the NS Panel Pro has ADB over TCP enabled which is great for us because it means we can connect to it wirelessly without having to take it apart. For this next step, you're going to need the IP address of your NS Panel Pro. So if you haven't already set it up using Sonoff's interface, go and do that and you can grab your IP address. The easiest way to grab your panel's IP address is by just going into the settings, choosing about, and then you'll see the IP address listed. Or optionally, you can just go into your router settings and find the IP like that. We've now got our platform tools and our IP address, so let's get connecting. Inside of our platform tools explorer window, we're just going to right click in some white space and we're going to choose open in terminal. And conveniently, this is going to spawn a Windows terminal directly in this directory. I have terminal selected as my default option, which is why I see it there. So in your case, if you don't see that and you just see open with the default Windows command prompt, it's okay to do it with that. But if you haven't tried terminal out, I would definitely suggest giving it a go. And just in case you don't have those options available to you, you can still follow along using the Windows command prompt. So if you right click in the address bar and choose copy address, you can then open up the Windows command prompt. And if you type CD and then paste in the text that you've got, and then hit enter. That will then jump you into the directory and you can follow along with the rest of the tutorial. You can make use of whatever your preferred terminal is, but as I said, I'm making use of terminal, so let's jump back to that. Inside of our terminal, we're now gonna type ADB connect, followed by the IP address of our terminal, and we should then hopefully see some messages from the daemon telling us that it's starting to run and also that it's successfully running. And the bottom line should then also tell you that it's connected to that IP address on port 5555. Next, we're going to need to download the Ultra Small Launcher APK, and we're going to save this directly inside of our Platform Tools folder. And when you save that, make sure you do save it inside of the Platform Tools folder, just because we're going to be referencing it from the command line, and it makes it easy if they're all just in the same location. As we've got an open connection to our panel now, we can make use of the ADB install command, and we can actually install the Ultra Small Launcher. So let's do that now. We can do this by typing ADB install, ultra-small-launcher.apk. If you hit enter, that should tell you it's performing the streamed install, and after a couple of seconds, you should see a success message. If when you run this install command, or any of the other ones we're gonna be looking at, and you get an error message, or an error like this, where it tells you there's no such file or directory, then more than likely, it's because you haven't placed the file in the correct location. So when you're saving the file, make sure you are putting it in that platform's tools folder, and the same with extracting, when you're extracting, make sure you also extract to the platform tools folder. In order to move on to our next install, we're going to need to simulate a home button press just because the NS Panel Pro hasn't got any physical buttons. And you're going to want to make note of this command as you're going to need to make use of it if you're playing around with the NS Panel and sideloading other apps or doing anything else with the screen. 
just because when you enter an interface, you're gonna get stuck in it as there's no buttons to actually kick you out of it. So go ahead and type ADB shell input key event three and hit enter. Carrying on, we're gonna install the exposed installer, making sure that we save it directly into the platform tools folder. With that downloaded, we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the ultra small launcher, and we're gonna install it directly on the panel using ADB commands. Back in the terminal, we're gonna type ADB install, and if you start typing the name of the APK, and then hit tab, it will just auto complete the rest of it for you. When you hit enter, you should see that perform and streamed install again, and again after a couple of seconds, you'll hopefully see that success message. Continuing on, we're gonna download the exposed framework, which comes in a .tar file format, and we're gonna also be installing this directly into our platform tools folder. This time we're not gonna be installing the file and instead we're gonna push it to the panel and once it's on the panel, we're gonna manipulate it a little bit. In the terminal, we're gonna type adb push followed by the name of that .tar file. We're then gonna type forward slash SD card, forward slash download. We can then press enter and when we do, we'll see a small little upload bar telling us the state of the upload. And after a couple of seconds, you should see a message telling you that one file was pushed. Now that our .tar file's on our panel, we're gonna be using the adb shell in order to manipulate it. And there's gonna be a lot of commands that we're gonna be executing here. So don't worry if you don't know what they're all doing. They are all listed below. Just make sure you copy and paste them in the order that I do them. Let's start by opening a shell. So in our terminal, we're gonna type adb shell and hit enter. We're then gonna need elevated privileges in order to modify our files. So let's switch to root. We do this by typing su and hit an enter. We can now start copying and pasting our commands in. So let's paste our first one in, which is gonna make the file system writable and hit enter. We now need to navigate to the directory where we pushed our exposed tar file. And we do this by using cd forward slash sd card forward slash download. From within this folder, we can now extract the contents of our tar file using the command tar minus xvf, then the name of the file. With the extraction completed, we can now change into that new directory. And inside of here, there's an installer script that we now need to make executable. So let's paste in the command to do that for us. Now that we've made the installer script executable, let's run it by pasting in our final shell command and hitting enter. The script to install the exposed framework is gonna take a couple of seconds to run, but when it completes, you'll see a message on the bottom telling you that the first boot is gonna take longer than usual to actually run. And when you see this message, you're gonna know it's safe to reboot the device. You'll now also be happy to know that we're probably about halfway through our install, but all the hard work is now pretty much done. So unplug your NS Panel Pro, give it a couple of seconds, and then plug it back in. When the panel powers back up, it's gonna take a bit longer than it usually would to actually perform the boot, just as it's its first one. Once it does start up, it's gonna greet you with a screen where it's gonna ask you which home app you'd like to choose. You have the option of either using Launcher or you have the eWeLink control panel. If you select the Launcher, it's gonna boot you into an Android dashboard. And if you select the eWeLink control panel, then it's gonna take you into the normal Sonoff UI that you'd have known if you've been using the NS Panel Pro. With these two options, you also have another choice. There's an option for just once or always. If you choose just once, whichever option you select, it will boot you into that menu. But the next time the panel reboots, it's gonna prompt you to ask you which launcher you want to use. If you choose always, whichever launcher you select, it will always boot into that launcher first. It's entirely up to you whichever option you choose, but considering you're watching this tutorial, then more than likely you're gonna always want it to boot into the Android option, so you can select always there. If for some reason when you rebooted your panel, you didn't get the option to choose your launcher, if you enter the command adb shell input key event three, which if you remember, sends the command for the home button, the option for the launcher should then pop up. So select launcher and choose always, and the panel will then take you to an Android dashboard. Now that you're on the dashboard, you should be able to see an app called Exposed Installer, which is actually the app that we installed a while ago. If you select this app, it will pop up a little message telling you to be careful. And if you just tick the box that says don't show this alert again, and then tick okay, you should then hopefully be able to see a big green banner letting you know that Exposed Installer is fully installed. If for whatever reason it's not green and it's orange, then more than likely it's because it hasn't finished installing and you may just need to reboot the device in order to get this to install. Carrying on, we're now gonna download the AnyWebView APK file from GitHub. And again, when you're downloading this, make sure you put in it inside of your platform tools folder. Also, if you haven't realized, this is actually how we sideload apps onto the panel. So just find an APK file you want, then put it into a directory that's accessible and connected to the panel. Then if you use that adb install command, it will sideload it onto the panel. In the terminal, we're gonna type adb install anywebview.apk. And once again, we'll then see performing streamed install, followed by that success message. 
On our panel, if we open up Exposed again and expand the menu out on the left, you should see an option for modules. If you select that, you should see any web views listed there. And if you tick the little box next to it, this will then activate it. With that now activated, you now need to reboot your NS panel. Whenever you reboot your NS panel, if you find that the terminal you were using is no longer able to talk to the panel, if you just run the adb connect command again, that will link you straight back up to it. Now that the panel's rebooted, you guessed it, we're going to install another APK. This APK is going to update our web view, which in turn is going to allow us to run apps like Fully Kiosk Browser, the Wall Panel, and of course, the Home Assistant Companion app. So download that and put it straight into your Platform Tools folder. With the APK now inside of the platform tools, we can once again run ADB install. It's worth noting that the WebView APK is also quite big, so this one's going to be a longer install. Now it should only take a couple of seconds, but if it does take a little bit longer, then don't worry, it is a larger APK. Once that installs, we can head back to our panel, and from here we need to open up settings and scroll down to system. In system, you should find about tablet, and if we open that up and scroll down, you'll see an option for build number. We now need to tap on the build number seven times, which will enable the developer options. When you see the little notification saying you are now a developer, you'll know that the developer tools have been successfully activated. If we now back out from this page, you'll see the new option for the developer tools. And if we select this, it will take us into all of those new options. In these new options, you'll see an option for web view implementation. And if we select this, we'll be greeted with two different options. The top one is the original Android system web view. And the bottom one is the new Android system web view, which is the one that we installed. So select that one. You're now free to go off and sideload whatever apps you want. And as you've got an updated web view, more apps will now work for you. So as I mentioned, things like the Home Assistant Companion app, Fully Kiosk, Wall Panel, and a bunch of others. If you want to stick around with me though, we are now going to install the Home Assistant Companion app and I'm also going to show you how to set it up so that the screen will turn on and off. In order to get Home Assistant onto our panel, we first need to download the Home Assistant Companion app APK. And just like with all of the other APKs that we've installed today, we first need to download and save them into our Platform Tools folder. At this point, you're probably an expert at sideloading APKs onto your panel, but using ADB install, followed by the name of the APK, we're going to install that onto our panel. And again, we're going to see the performing stream installed and also the success message. If you happen to have your panel in front of you, as the Home Assistant app installs, you'll actually see it pop up on the screen. And once you see that on the screen, you can select it and get started with Home Assistant. Just like with the standard Home Assistant app, you can log in by providing a username and password, and you can also specify if you want to connect to a local or a remote instance. One handy little tip and a suggestion that I'd make is I'd create an individual user for the specific NS panel that you're going to log into on Home Assistant. This will allow you to track any of the changes or modifications that this device makes to your Home Assistant, and you can also limit its access. And that is probably something that you're going to want to do, especially if you've got this thing out in a publicly accessible space. So we've now got Home Assistant fully working on the panel and we can do anything that you'd normally do within the companion app. The only problem that we have now is we can't control the screen's brightness and we can't tell the screen to turn on and off. So let's have a look at fixing that now. The final APK that we're going to be installing today is AutoMagic. So go and grab the latest version, which is the Android 10 1.38 version and download that to your platform tools. With that downloaded, we can then sideload it using ADB install AutoMagic. And once again, we'll see the performance streamed install and that success message. If you've got your panel open in front of you, you'll see the AutoMagic app pop up as it installs. Once it's there, you can select it and then you'll be greeted with some terms of service. We'll need to agree to this and then we'll also be greeted with the tutorial. And for this, you'll just need to skip through it by pressing the next button. If you'd never seen or used the AutoMagic app before, essentially it allows you to put together a flow where you can combine different actions and conditions in order to get your device to trigger or run in a certain way. For our use case, we're going to be using it to get the proximity sensor to turn the screen on when it detects something in front of it. In order to get started with building our own flow, we're first going to need to delete all of the example ones. To do this, you just select the three dots in the bottom right corner of each of the flows and select delete. With all of those deleted, our middle section should now be clear. And if you can see that red warning bar on the bottom, then don't worry, this will just disappear by itself. With that done, we can now download our final file. And this one is just a simple XML file. As this one's an XML file and not an APK, we're going to push this onto the panel using the command which you'll find in the description below. Back on our panel, we're now going to need to import that XML. 
as that XML contains the template that we're going to be using in order to set up our flow. To import the file, we're going to need to open up the side menu on the left, and then we're going to scroll down to import flows and widgets. Inside of here, we're going to need to open up another side menu, and then we're going to select downloads. Inside of the downloads folder, we should be able to see the XML file that we pushed to the panel. And when we select that file, it will open up the pre-made template. What we're looking at now is our flow, and we can turn this flow on by pressing the switch in the top right corner. This screen might look a little bit daunting, but it's actually quite simple. The top node is our control for the proximity sensor, so you can edit this if you want to be able to adjust your proximity values. And the bottom node is the screen adjustment, so you can set this if you want the screen's brightness to change to a set value, or if you wanted to just modify it even further, I would highly encourage having a play with this. If you select a node, you'll see a little pencil icon, a delete icon, and also an add icon. We're going to be selecting the pencil icon, and this is going to allow you to edit those files. Inside of here, you'll be able to see the current value for the proximity sensor, and this value will change based on how close something is to it. So if you put your hand over it, the number will go really high, and if you move further away, then the number will drop slightly. My suggestion here is to just take a step back and just have a look at what the kind of resting value is. You then want to set your distance to be higher than this number. That way when you put your hand close to it, the screen will turn on and off. You'll need to play around with this a little bit in order to find the sweet spot. I tested out a few panels and each of the panels have all got different values. For mine, they sit between 900 and 1000. But if your current value is reporting way lower than the 700 that I was seeing on this panel, then you might need to set that value a lot lower. The second node is a lot simpler to set up. You first need to set the screen brightness. So you've got two options here. You can have it bright or you can have it dim. Then you also need to set the duration. And this duration is just the time that the screen's going to stay on for after that proximity has been detected. A simple way to test out and configure your flow is to just head back to the main flow screen. And from here, if you wave your hand in front of the proximity sensor, the proximity sensor should flash red, letting you know it's activated. Then you should also see the second node flash red, letting you know that the screen brightness is also working. The final steps for this whole process is to head back to the dashboard. Remember, you can do this by entering the ADB command key event 3. And when you're on the dashboard, we're going to select settings and then display. Inside of display, we're going to scroll down and choose advanced. And from here, we're going to select sleep. Inside of sleep, you can set how long you want the device to stay on without any interaction. And the timeouts range from never sleep all the way up to 30 minutes. In the testing that I've done, I found that having the device sleep at 30 seconds and also with the second node, having the screen turn on bright for 30 seconds has been the best combination. It's been the most reliable and the one that I haven't really had any problems with. If your device does fall asleep and your proximity sensor doesn't wake it back up, you'll need to remove power to the device or take the front faceplate off in order to get it to restart. With those sleep settings in place, we're finally done with this project. And you can go and install the device into the location you want it to be in. And when you open up Home Assistant, after the timeout, the device will fall asleep. And waving your hand in front of it should wake it up and bring it back to life. If the Home Assistant app isn't for you and you want to try something else out, remember throughout this tutorial, you have learned how to sideload apps. So you could download another APK, take the fully kiosk browser, for example. You could sideload that on and then you could make use of the fully kiosk browser. The NS Panel Pro is still fairly an expensive device and I do wish that something like this would just run on it out of the box so you wouldn't have to run through all of this kind of setup. Who knows, maybe in the future they may change it and Home Assistant may just work by default or maybe they'll give us a better way of doing this. But for now, this is the best way to get Home Assistant onto the device. And there we go guys, that's been a little look at how to set up Home Assistant on the NS Panel Pro, as well as a look at how to sideload other apps, and also the ability to control the screen using that proximity sensor. If you have enjoyed this video, then don't forget to drop me a like, and if you're not already, hit the subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell, you'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. Again, a massive thank you to Blackadder for actually putting in all of the work and getting all of this stuff to work, you're awesome dude. And another thank you to these awesome dudes, these awesome dudes are my Patreons, and if you're interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find a link to my Patreon in the description below. Should you want to see any of my other Home Assistant based videos, then check out this playlist just here. But thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.